Hey, Steve, look at this. The guys from Coordinator are here. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Pega Systems. You know, we've been told that you guys wanted to see our fourth floor project. And to make this a little bit easier on us, don't tell anybody, but we're going to go COVID-less on this tour. So come on in. We're going to show you our fourth floor at One Charles Park. So this is our new space. We built it over the last year here at Pega. And what we've tried to do is create some new space for Pega. We're calling it our version three because it's the third iteration of workspace here at Pega since I've joined over 10 years ago. This is my facility manager, Steve Farrick. Steve's gonna come on the tour with us and talk a little bit about what we learned while we built out the space. Hey Steve, while we're waiting, can you make us a cup of coffee sure. and we'll sort of talk to the people a bit about who Pega is. So Pega builds a platform that very large companies use to build very complex um, solutions to solve problems to help their customers and build their business. Some of the examples we like to use when we talk about what Pega does is the one I think we're most proud of recently is we work with the US Census Bureau to participate in a large part of the US Census. All of the people that came and knocked on your door if you didn't send back those pieces of paper um, used a mobile device, whether it be an iPhone or an iPad or even an Android device to take all of your answers and immediately collect them while they were out walking around. For those of you who travel internationally, uh, one of our partners built an application for Heathrow Airport where they manage all ground operations from wheels down into wheels up again. Very complex, very challenging solution that we worked on. And we have a number of other partners that are out there that have done some really great stuff. But what we're gonna do, hey, thank you very much. What we're gonna do today is talk a little bit about this office. This office was originally designed to be for permanent people that were gonna be here every day. That was always part of our culture prior to COVID-19. But as we were finishing it, we were already having everybody work from home and we're in the process of morphing this space into something new. Luckily, we had already started to take into consideration work from home and how people were gonna collaborate in the future. And we'll talk about some of the additional changes that we made to the space as we go through the tour that we're about to do. What I'm gonna do is talk to you now is, is the cafeteria space. Obviously, we have the ability to make coffee down here. We have refrigerators so that people can bring their lunch in because they're gonna be flex officing. Um, but what we wanted to do is create space that people could have lunch, collaborate during the day, have a party at night if they wanted to. And it was originally gonna be designed so that people could come and play games, ping pong, pool, foosball, and that kind of stuff. But what we really realized post COVID is that ping pong and that foosball probably wasn't gonna happen because people were gonna be too close to each other. So what we did is we created some collaboration space. And um, as you all know, these chairs, if we were here on a regular basis, half of them would be taken away so that people could socially distance. But we're not gonna be playing foosball and ping pong, at least not anytime in the near future. And then the other thing that we did is we were planning on having our friends from IT come down here and be able to help out with with um, help desk stuff. So we actually created some space over here where the IT folks could do that. But what I wanna do now is try to take into some of the um, collaboration spaces that we built. We're gonna go take a little walk over here and show you some of that other stuff. Hey Steve, isn't there a conference room down here that we can go to? Right around the corner we've got. Okay, one. let's go in here and running. sort of show everybody what we got here for collaboration space. Uh, we're down here. Oh, who's here? Oh, hey, oh, Todd, how are you? Good. Hey, this is really great. We've got some friends from Coronet here that wanted to sort of see our new space that we built with Marley's and Peruzzi. Yeah. Can you sort of talk about the technology that we put in here? Yeah, absolutely. We have a fully integrated Cisco system. Um, all you need to do is go into Microsoft Outlook, book the room, set up a meeting, and the room automatically knows uh, what time you want to be here and can uh, connect you to the meeting with one button press. Oh, no. Two button presses, sorry. <laughs> so, John, you know, we've worked really closely with IT over the years. Are there any changes that we made in this conference room compared to other projects? Oh, yeah. This one, huge improvement. We got rid of the sound masking, which was driving the microphones on our devices insane. It didn't know where the noise was coming from. It all just sounded like white noise. 
Um, Are you telling me I did something wrong on the first project, John? And I mean, something wrong, yes, I'm sorry, yeah. Okay. It was a disaster. So what you just see is we have a really great rapport with our IT AV team. We have worked together on numerous projects around the world. And that open and free dialogue that we have back and forth has allowed us to do some really cool stuff. John, anything else that we did to this room to help you out? Uh, yeah, this room sounds great. We have this new acoustic uh, treatment on both of these walls. They also look great. Um, and they just help uh, keep down the reflections and just make it a really crisp experience. For it everyone. really did make your job a lot easier because you used to get a lot of phone calls from people because they would complain about the sound quality of their meetings. And I knew exactly night. what they were talking about. Yeah, all right. So that's what it is. It's really about being free and open and honest about learning what you can do better. Now, Steve, you know, I think you told me that you have a place that you go and hide somewhere on the fourth floor and I've never been able to find it. Can you show me where you go when uh, you come and hide down here? I wouldn't say hide. Oh, really? I do come down here. Why do you come down here for this? Well, one big reason is because you're not here and I can just tuck myself away. Wow, you, you can just disappear down here, can't you? That's right. Could have a phone call, could be on a meeting if I wanted to. It has the cushions here for sound masking. It's very comfortable and looking out at daylight. That's really cool. So a lot of this is all built around collaboration. Steve, is there other collaboration space down here that we want to show everybody? There are actually quite a few. I can show you one right over this way. Oh, cool. Oh, I forgot about this space. That's right, Steve. This is really cool. This is one of my favorite spots out of this project. One of the things that we have been asked for, from especially from our marketing, the creative people in marketing, is to create some space that's open, that they can move around furniture and be able to do all sorts of stuff. They wanted a lot of natural light. They wanted the ability to just come in here and just sit down and start talking to each other without having to schedule the space. And so this corner spot was identified very early in the project that this is where we're gonna put those creative people. We've got fantastic natural light. So when they're looking at colors and trying to decide some of the stuff in our brand, they can see it in natural light. Hopefully I look better while we're talking here. The other thing we did is we gave them all soft furniture because they didn't want it to be formal. Creative people want to feel comfortable. They want to be informal. They don't want to feel like they're business people. They want to feel like they're creative people and they have an environment where they can do that. And then finally, and most importantly, we have ample whiteboard space here for them so that they can keep track of everything that they're talking about and everybody can chime in. They have magnets up there so that they can put paper and anything else that they want to hang from the metalized boards. It really is a very um, customizable space for whoever might want to come in here. Now, this transition for our marketing team really started with our CMO. He wanted some transi tra transformational space for his organization. So what I want to do is take it down to his office and we can talk about how we work with Tom to change his office so that he set the standard for the rest of his team. Come on along. Oh, you know what? I was just thinking, before we go, is John, oh, John, you are here. Hey, Great. What's up? Hey, you know what? We're gonna go to Tom's office, but before we do that, I wanna talk to Margulies about a change in the drawing. Can we get them on WebEx and talk to them on this fancy board you got? Yeah, absolutely. Just use that number that I gave you earlier. Okay, that works. Really, that's all you have to do is just type in a number and Margulies like dial just on a phone. Gets here? Just like dial on the phone. Holy smokes. So this is a web hey, board. Look at that. Diane and Janet are right here. That's really cool. There they are. Hey, hey guys. guys. Hey, you know what? While we were walking the Cornet people through, we were talking about a change that somebody in marketing wanted us to make to the drawing. Diane, can you call up the drawing so that we can talk about a change that I want to make? Yeah, let me see. There you go, you might need this. What's this? It's a, it's a stylus, so you can, base, it's basically your digital marker. Really? Yeah. I, and I can modify their drawing with this? Mm-hmm, make any changes you like. Really, so I just touch it, and and I go like that? Mm-hmm. 
And now it's taking a oh. shot, and I can edit it however you like. So I can edit, I can just draw on this, really? So listen, guys, everybody loves yeah. the drawing that you've done, right? right? I'm sure you're gonna get great feedback from everybody at Cornet after we get done here. But one of the things that we've heard from our marketing department is the upper right-hand corner of the drawing, right in this area, they want a library. Okay. You know, I think what we can do is put in a wall here and and maybe, you know, I'm not an architect, you guys are. We can put a door in there. You know, I want to put all glass so that people can see who's in there and stuff like that. And then, and then yeah. what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you that drawing. Can you see those changes that I made? So can you sort of take a look at this and see whether or not you can work something so that we can create a quiet space for the people in the future? Sounds good. I think we can work out a lot for you. Hey, we're going to take the rest of the people from Cornet through the rest of the space. We'll catch you guys later and uh, talk a little bit more about the project, okay? Sounds good. Thank you. So this is really one of the things that I really like about down here is uh, this new office. So we have a new CMO, actually he's been here for quite a while, but when he first arrived here, he wanted to make big changes as far as how his office was configured. So we sat down with him and said, where do you want to go? And he said, Dan, I want something that creative people are going to feel comfortable coming in and meeting with me. I don't want it to be a formal meeting space. So we sat down and he said, all I want is a height adjustable desk. I want space that people will feel comfortable to come in and I want to be able to collaborate with my team around the globe. So here are the changes. First thing is what you see are barn doors so that he can open his office and everybody is welcome at any point in time. Sends a complete different message than having a swing door. Second thing he did was I want to be like everybody else. I want a big monitor. Most of our employees all have two. He wanted the big bent one. But most importantly, he has the same height adjustable desk as every one of our other employees. And then the big change was the conference room furniture. As you can see, it's all soft furniture so that if he wants to have a business meeting, he can have a business meeting. But if he wants to have a creative meeting, which a large part of his staff is, a lot more of his staff will feel much more comfortable sitting in here than they would at a conference room table. And interestingly enough, as we have gone through and fixed or changed all of our FLT or leadership offices, all of them have followed this plan because they all want to have their offices be spaces that their employees are comfortable to come and visit them at any point in time. But most importantly, these guys travel on a regular basis and they want their offices to be used as conference rooms when they're not here. And this is a great way to have six or eight people in a conference room without having to schedule it. It's impromptu and available at any point in time. And it's very inviting space. So let's talk a little bit about how we built out the rest of the space. So as you can see, what we've done is it's gone with our traditional height adjustable desks. Everybody gets two monitors. Um, one of the things that we'll talk about later on with people from Margulies is how we're going to modify this space for post-COVID occupancy. Probably a little bit too dense than what we would like going forward, but ultimately we're still working on our post-COVID plans and we're going to have some internal discussions on it. One of the other changes that we made, and we had a lot of discussions on this as, a, as the design team was working with us, is what are we gonna do about trash? Because one of the things that we have talked about is with the change at PEGA becoming all digital, the amount of paper, the amount of books, the amount of just everything that people have has been reduced significantly. And we're making a big push to sustainability. So one of the first things we did was take away all of the individual waste baskets and put in common waste areas within the space so that we didn't have to spend so much extra time with all of the cleaners. They can now go to one or two places on a floor and pick up all the trash rather than having to go to everybody's workspace. Now, we have a number of conference rooms that are here. They're all different sizes, but again, you'll see we brought in a whole bunch of different types of collaboration space. So we can have impromptu meetings that are here. As long as people are just talking, you want to get up and have a, 
quick coffee with somebody, it's comfortable, it's easy to get to. But I think the neat thing that we have learned from building out this space is just how great these framery booths are. And one of the things that we've learned as, as we've developed our booth decision is we really are, are, are excited about the stuff that we're getting from Framery right now. This is like going into a soundproof room. Uh, really solid doors. The Wi-Fi gets in here just fine. There's more than enough room. Steve, come on in. There's more than enough room for certainly two people. And if you're pretty good friends, you can fit in four people here relatively comfortably. Certainly three is not a problem at all. But most importantly, when you close that door, if I didn't have my mic on, you wouldn't be able to hear me at all, but you can't hear a thing outside when I'm talking. So let's go over. We're going to show you some other collaboration spaces that we've done that people are really excited about seeing. Our marketing department is all about creativity and how people work together. So one of the things that we did is even sometimes the real estate and facilities folks would be creative. Steve and I went to a meeting with the people from human scale and they called out that they had something called a mushroom. And we saw this and we immediately said, you know, that is going to be great in the new fourth floor project. And we talked to our furniture dealer and we said, you need to talk to human scale and go get them some mushrooms. And so it adds a lot of color here and they're really comfortable. And if you're into exercising, they're really good for your core too. But ultimately what this is really about is to have a variety of different seating styles that people can be. How many times have you sat in a conference room and been in a rocking chair? Or more importantly, for people that don't like to be challenged or have people talking to them and trying to get them, by giving them seating that looks like something they'd have at their home, they're much more comfortable and they're probably much more willing to be open and talk about the things that are important that need to come out in a meeting. And then we also, in this case, what we did is we gave them some pegboards because a lot of our people from marketing have paper and ideas. It's sort of like the old school Pinterest. Yes, we still like to put stuff up on pegboards and make that happen. Now, Steve, I think there's some more of your chairs down here. Can we take everybody down and show them the other chairs? Let's go. So we've really tried to intersperse these chairs throughout so that people can come and hide as they want. And yes, there are some times where both Dan and Steve like to sit down and just disappear. And this is a great way to do it. We can sit here, you can watch the fall colors, you can watch the trees bud in the springtime and just be here by yourself. And you know, you can even pull this up and have your laptop here. And if you wanna charge your mobile device, we've got chargers here for you and you can plug your laptop in and keep it charged while you're working here. And hopefully, if you're not a snorer, you can even kick up your feet and close your eyes for a couple of minutes and take a quick nap. So one of the things that we were always talking about is how many offices do we need to have in our new space if we're going to be flex? And so one of the things that we wanted to show is how we could take one of these offices and repurpose it as collaboration space. So that's what we did. We took all the office furniture out of here. It's all mobile furniture, can easily be taken out and brought in comfortable furniture so that we can show if we do decide to take out all of our offices, how we would repurpose the space for additional collaboration space or other uses. Now, one of the other things that we talked about, we made a change early on when we came down here, when we knew that marketing was going to uh, come down here. And what was one of the things that we were worried about? Uh, they were going to go to flex seating and we have more people than we have seats. Um, and we knew that people had things that they needed to store. So we went with lockers. And they worked out pretty well, didn't they? They have, yeah. So this is what we've done is we brought in a whole set of lockers and they've been interspersed throughout the space and they'll be assigned to individuals so that they can come in leave whatever they want. They can reprogram the locks each time they come in and use them. They can't lock their stuff and leave it here. And we do have codes to be able to get it in. But this has reduced the amount of stuff that needs to be 
left on any one of the desks. And, you know, we have some people that still like books. Some of our writers still like pens and pencils. They don't want to just do it on their laptop. And this is a way for them to be able to leave some of that stuff here and be able to use it. Now, not all of this is unique. All of you have probably done some of this in one of your projects along the way. This is really about collaboration and talking to people and really being able to learn from their needs. And so one of the things that we have learned tremendously in talking to all of the people that have used these conference rooms is that there's always hanger honors. If there's a big meeting or if there's gonna be somebody senior that's gonna to talk to the group, even though the conference room could have hold 20, there could easily be 30. So we always had this space because we always have credenzas in our conference room because food is a big thing at PEGA. So what we did is rather than just have this be wasted space, we put seats over here. And now I don't have to move chairs around anymore. I don't have chairs that get stolen from other conference rooms. And I have a com comfortable spot where a significant number of people can be added to a room in a very short period of time, and I don't have to send staff around later on moving conference room chairs from other conference rooms back to where they came from initially. Been very, very well received. We're using it in some new designs that we're looking at for offices outside the United States, and uh, it's working out pretty well. All right, well, that's our new space. We have some employees that are really excited about what we've done. Our senior leadership has said, hey, Dan and Steve, you've really done a great job. We're really happy with what's here. And, you know, a lot of our employees are excited about coming back to work here. Some of the lessons learned. One, you got to have a great partner. And obviously the people from Margulies and Peruzzi have worked very hard sort of figuring out what PEGA needed. But the one thing that I really want to drive home that I think is most important is that you've seen a number of things that we have done cooperatively to make sure that all of the people that we have to work with have had a say in the project. I think Steve would agree with me that we have probably one of the best teams that we've worked with um, in our careers here at PEGA that, that we have a really great rapport with. As you can see with John coming and helping us out at the last minute doing our meeting with Margulies. Um, but we're going to jump out of the video right now and go live and be able to answer some additional questions about what PEG is doing for COVID-19 and the workplace of the future. And we'll even be able to take some of your questions uh, live through the meeting that we're going to cut back into. So thank you for joining us and uh, we look forward to hearing some of your questions uh, shortly.